Monday night, it's 8 o'clock, it's WGGS Television, and this is Nightline. And we thank you for stopping by. We want you to stay with us for the entire hour and a half tonight. Uh, we've got some great guests. I'm, I'm telling you, the music tonight, well, my old buddy Ken Turner, the Blackwood Brothers, that's who it was that he sang with for so many years. Uh, he is such a blessing. You're going to enjoy him tonight. Listen to this guest lineup. I'm telling you, we've got, we've got the cream of the crop tonight, so don't go anywhere. Uh, Reverend Jamie Murphy, the president of the Proactive Parenting Initiative with us tonight. We're going to be talking tonight uh, particularly about men by design. You're going to hear a lot of us saying much about that. Also, Dr. Jeff Craddock, a Christian psychiatrist, uh, also who'll be talking about uh, his work, but also the men by design. And also, Pastor Brad Good Ale. Good Ale. I like that name. And uh, he is CEO of C4 Ministries Incorporated. You're going to enjoy the program. I am too because uh, these men have much to share, much to say. Ken has much to sing. And we have prayer partners who are standing by to take all you want to share with them down on paper so we can pray for you. You see that number right over here, don't you? 864. Oop, let me catch it under there. 864 244 1616. If you go to your telephone, we'll be listening for your call. We're waiting on your call, and we want to encourage you to call. You can, we'll pray with you, we'll encourage you. And if you don't know who Jesus Christ is, you've heard a lot about him, you've tuned in from, uh, from time to time on this program, we want to encourage you, please. If you want to ask questions of these prayer counselors, they're ready to come to know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Over uh, in the book of Psalms is our scripture tonight from Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Now listen. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law... He meditates day and night. I love that. I read that one of those precious, precious verses, two verses there in Psalm chapter 1. And uh, we encourage you now to not only remember those words, remember what uh, Ken Turner is going to sing. He's going to sing for us right now, Where Could I Go? Ken Turner! <laughs> Living below in this old sinful world Hardly a comfort can afford Striving along to face temptation sore Where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. Needing a friend to help me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? Neighbors are kind. I love them, everyone. We get along and sweet accord. But when my soul needs manna from above, where can I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. Need in a friend to help me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? Fiddles now. Life here is grand with friends I love so dear. Comfort I get from God's own word. But when I feel the chilling hand of death 
where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. Needing a friend to help me in the end. Where could I go but to the What can you say about Ken Turner except he's genuine, he's real, and a blessing he is. Thank you so much, Ken. Hey, tonight, talking to several gentlemen, and listen carefully because there's a lot to learn, uh, and not only to learn but to share. I'm talking with Jamie Murphy, Reverend Jamie Murphy. I welcome you, my brother. Thank you. We're so glad to have you here on Nightline, President of Proactive Parenting Initiative. And uh, i got to ask you, what? tell me, in a nutshell, what is proactive, uh, proactive Parenting Initiative, in a nutshell? Um, I, I lead a ministry that um, I teach parenting conferences, parenting classes, parenting seminars for churches and community organizations. And we have the only weekend Christian boot camp ministry in the Carolinas. Wow. Okay, that's great. Now, we have, I, I know we're talking about uh, men uh, by design was this your brainchild what is the mission of men by design was it your brainchild uh, uh, give us a little background there. all right so working with the families that i work with i've um one of the biggest thorns in my flesh are working with kids who do not have positive relationships with their fathers yeah. or their fathers are non-existent and so in conjunction with parenting um i was just riding down the road one day i have a I, it's not mine, but I have access to a camp up yeah. in North Carolina, uh -huh. and um, I was thinking this would be a great place to um, have a men's retreat. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm riding down the road, and two of the men that are with me tonight, um, they were two of the first two guys that I called, and I said, tell me what you think about this, and they both said, let's do it. Yeah. So Men by Design is a um, collaborative effort. I'm... Um, Mr. Goodale, who's here tonight, is going to mm -hmm. tell you that I'm the leader, um, but we have a team of guys that work together. There's about six of us. Um, so we have me from Proactive Parenting Initiative. We have Brad from C4 Ministries. We have Dr. Craddock from his ministry. Right. We have um, two twin brothers, um, Dr. Tommy Richardson, who is the new director of missions down in... Um, Somerville, South Carolina. Okay, little part. Uh -huh. His brother David, um, Dr. David Richardson, is a pastor in Aiken, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And then we have Chris Rondo, who is the area representative for Man in the Mirror Ministries. Yeah. And we, we come together. We do um, two retreats, one in the spring, one in the fall. And what's different about our retreat is um, we, we have a spiritual emphasis. Our right. theme for this year is unbind the strong man. Mm -hmm. Um, based upon the scripture where Jesus told, um, was telling the story that you, you can't break into a strong man's house except you first bind him and tie right. him up. And we believe that we've got a bunch of strong men mm -hmm. in our churches that are tied up right. and right. ineffective. Right. And we want to unle unleash them and unloose them and set them free Amen. and set them on fire. That's Amen. what we want to see. Amen. And... Um, but what's different about our retreat is there are a gr lot of great retreats out there. Yeah, yeah. But they're all focused on preaching. Mm -hmm. And I love preachers. I am one. But we're not looking for another sermon at our men's retreat. So uh, let me ask you, so who, who are you trying to reach with this retreat? Any man. Any man. And they come and we have our... Um, we, we've got great food. We, we do some amazing food. We're Thursday evening. We're going to have a rib dinner. And oh, wow. after, after we get done eating, we all going to head out to the fire pit. Okay. And around the fire pit, um, Brad's leading our first session, and we're going to have an interactive discussion Crazy. based upon unbind the strong man. But then on Friday morning when we get up, 
we eat breakfast, we have a devotion, and then we scatter. Mm -hmm. And um, we do things like um, Dr. Craddock leads groups on whitewater rafting tours. Right. Um, we go um, skeet shooting, off-road jeeping, striper <laughs> bass fishing. Um, we've also, we're looking for guys that want to do some motorcycling and cycling Man. and golfing. And we spend a day just doing a bunch of fun things where men can hang out with other right. men and iron can sharpen some iron. Right. Then we come back Friday evening for, for this, this coming Friday, we're having a fish fry. Right. Our fishermen have been given the task of bringing Catching home the, the meat right. for Friday night's fish fry. And um, then we head back out to the fire pit Friday night. Then we spend the night, Saturday morning, we have two, set, two sessions Saturday morning, and we're done by 11 o'clock, we're leaving. Wow. So we, wow. we, we want to challenge pastors, get some men together and come to our yeah. retreats, and you can still be home for church on Sunday morning. All right, and, uh, and so this begins on uh, this uh, Thursday, correct? Or is it Friday? Begins the this 23rd. Coming, this coming Thursday, right, we right. eat at 6.30, okay. and we still have um, space for 50 more guys. Okay. Um, the cost is $100, right. and if you want to go shoot skeet on Friday, that's been paid for. We have a local businessman who said, you know what, I want to get behind this. I will pay for anybody that wants to come sh sh shooting skeet on Friday. Man alive. Now, that, our, our viewers are seeing that at home, and if they need more information up there, they can contact you at, uh, at your telephone number, what's it, 864-320-4844, or they can go to uh, uh, jmurphy at proactiveparents.org. Yes, sir. And uh, contact Hey, that might be something for you. Now, I've, I've got to ask you this. Oh, where is the retreat? Where is it being held? This one on We're going to be at Camp McDaniel. Okay. Camp and McDaniel is three miles due north of the Cowpens Battlefield on 221, just off of 221A in Mooresboro, North Carolina. So that would all really be just right over the line. Yes, You're sir. Stepping We're stepping right over the line. Yes, sir. All right. Now, you heard that. And uh, there's some, so you can take about 50 more men. Yes, sir. Okay. And if you would like to go, or you, uh, you know, you could give uh, uh, Jamie a call, uh, go to that website again, and you, you can find out all, all about that. All right, now, what, uh, uh, we know what you do at the retreat, for example. you got skeet shooting, you see all that. But um, are there other things that go on when there are no retreats going on? Are there, are there interactive times, counseling times? Uh, wh what goes on when you're not, say, going to retreats? What? Well, we, we build relationships with the men that come to our retreats, right. and mm -hmm. so we share our contact information right. and um, do, we're, we're there for the guys. That's, right. that's why um, I've told my team um, that when we're doing our fire pit time, we're getting to know these guys. Sure. And I, I know Dr. Craddock in, in particular, he's had people call him for the past, we've, this is our third retreat this coming weekend, right. and we started this a year ago, mm -hmm. and... Um, it's just amazing seeing the guys interact, but also during, let's just say, we call it the off season or whatever, right. we're doing men by design events. Um, we've been doing them lately almost every week yeah. and starting in January, I'm so pumped up about this. All right, what's happening in January? Starting in January here in the upstate, okay. from January to March, okay. we are doing a chili cook-off trail. We're doing a men's event every Tuesday night somewhere in the upstate at a different church. And it's a chili cook-off. We'll give away first place prizes of $100, $75 for second, $50 for third. Mm -hmm. And um, if you place, you get to advance to the grand finale in March. And that is? Um, we don't, we're not 100% sure okay. on the venue, okay. but it is one of our bigger churches here in the upstate. They're going to host this. And um, if you, let's say you come in January and to a chili cook-off and you lose and you think, man, I really want to win one of these things. Mm -hmm. We'll come the next week to the next venue and you get a shot. If you make it in the top three each week, you can come to the grand finale in March. You know, now do you have all the churches lined up? At we do. We just don't have that last one is the last one we're waiting on. Well, I mean, uh, I need to check church calendars and I can let you or Dr. Craddock know. Uh, of course, how big, how, what are you looking for? We're just looking for a fellowship hall to host <laughs> about 100, 
hundred guys. I've got a sanctuary as a gymnasium. You can do that. I can put three, four hundred. So, so you want your church to host one of these well, chili cook-offs? I would, I would like that. Yeah. Now, okay. listen, I'm just an interim, but uh, you know, uh, I can say yes. Well, after it, the show, we can talk. <laughs> it would be great, and we'll get you in there because that that would be so so much fun. I like what 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 this says: iron sharpens iron. And a weekend of great fellowship, food, fun, and encouragement, and training. I've got to ask you a question. Why do you think that uh, so many homes are being vacated by fathers, by men? Why are we seeing so many, uh, maybe, ladies having to raise families? What's going on? Sin. I agree. Sin. Yes. The enemy is strong. Absolutely. And... Um, this has been a slow fade for 40 or 50 years now. Yeah. And, um, and as we drift further away from the biblical model of the family, right. um, the snowball's just rolling downhill yeah. and getting bigger and bigger. And when someone does stand up and say, this is wrong, this isn't the way we're supposed to be doing this, right. they're pushed to the side. And, completely. You know, yeah. They're made to look like idiots. Mm -hmm. but. We're just reading what the Bible says. This is how the, the family is supposed to be run. I mean, it is. And, and I, I'm amazed at how many people want to rewrite the Bible and make it say what it doesn't say just to placate uh, their own uh, uh, desires, if you will, for lack of better terminology. So did you ever think, uh, say, five years ago, uh, you would be in this type ministry? Has this always been a burden on your heart? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, I came to South Carolina in 2007 mm -hmm. and went on staff at a church. Um, my title was uh, in, in North Augusta, the Emmanuel Baptist Church. I was their minister of outreach and family ministries. Okay. And my primary focus was I taught a parenting class every mm -hmm. week. And in that parenting class, it was a Bible-based parenting curriculum with right. no Bible in it. Right. Therefore, right. I got referrals from Family Court, DJJ, DSS, the local school system, and local law enforcement. Right. And we built a program at a church, and the South Carolina Baptist Convention recognized me in 2009 for outstanding family ministry in the right. state of South Carolina. Great. So I served there for five years, took a break to go back to finish my education from Anderson University. And when I got done with that, I started the Proactive Parenting Initiative. That's and we've been going strong ever since, but we added men by design a year ago. Right. Where, where is uh, uh, that uh, proactive parenting initiative ministry? Is it based in Traveler's Rest? I live in Traveler's Rest, okay. but we conduct parenting classes, um, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia. Right. Um, I'll go anywhere there's an open door. Right. So right. Um, we, we have different ways of doing our program to fit a church's schedule. Right. And um, so, whether it's a weekend conference, a one-night seminar, or um, the weekly classes. We've right. got two different versions. We've got a five-week class and a 10-week class. Right. And um, I'd love an opportunity to talk to pastors about, you know, doing something at their churches. Yeah, you need to because, you know, uh, though I may be vaguely familiar, of course, I'm retired, uh, you know, um, now hearing men by design, iron sharpens iron, I mean, I, have, I remember seeing or hearing, uh, I, I will go back, to my men on Wednesday night at a prayer meeting, I'm going to tell them, hey, anybody able, I'm going, to, I'm going to make sure I take this, make some copies. And, you know, and they can give you a buzz and, and, and all that. So beginning January through March is the chili cook-off every Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then will you pick these back up, the retreats, in what, April, May, and June? Our, our spring retreat, in, we'll have a spring retreat in May, and uh -huh. then we'll have another fall retreat in September next year. Okay. Um, we are tentatively going to be in Rock Hill for those two retreats next year. Okay. And um, that way we'll be more centrally located for the whole state right, and right. even draw out of Charlotte, hopefully. Right. Yeah, you, you would do that. You know, sometime when you see this, uh, could this be uh, any way comparable, not trying to be unfair, but comparable to, say, promise keepers, i.e. of getting men together for fellowship, um, because I know that w is a great program they've got out there. Sim we, we, we may be a little similar to promise keepers, mm -hmm. except we're not on that grand of a scale. I but um, for our weekly events, for example, we come in and um, we eat man food mm -hmm. on a Tuesday night. And when I say um, we bought a smoker that can cook 120 Boston butts. Mercy. 
and um, <laughs> we bring that smoker in and we, we feed ribs or barbecue or pull our um, chicken, mm. hamburger, steaks. Mm. Um, we're real good at doing low country boils. And then when we get done eating, we have somebody speak. Mm. And um, we've had Brother Brad has spoke at our events. Doc Craddock, we're working, um, we got some ideas for him. He's amazing, especially yes, he in is. the drug world. Yes, and, yes. Um, Yes, so is. we, and, and what I tell folks is when we do our, when we do our weekly events here again, I, I tell pastors, I'm not looking for a sermon. I'm looking for people with testimonies whose lives have been rocked by Jesus Amen. and they got a story to share. We've been talking to uh, today, uh, Jamie Murphy and uh, thank you, man, for being part of our program tonight, man, God bless you. And we're going to continue talking about men of design, men in uh, by design uh, with our next two guests. But right now, Ken Turner, he's not a guest. We just love him. Sweet by and by. Come on, Ken. A little Cajun bluegrass. There's a land that is fairer than day. And by faith, we can see it far For the Father waits over the way To prepare us a dwelling place there In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore If I say, oh! We shall sing on that beautiful shore the melodious song of the blessed And our spirit shall sorrow no more Not a sigh for the blessed of rest In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore and the sweet by and by We shall be on that beautiful shore Sing it with me, okay? In the sweet by and by We shall be on that beautiful shore In the sweet by and shall meet on that beautiful shore we shall meet on that beautiful Never been to Mint Hill, but maybe one day I will. Any more than I've been to Morrisburg, North Carolina, I guess I'm missing out in life, but I guess I need to do that. Our next guest is uh, Dr. Jeff Craddock. Jeff, we're, Dr. Craddock, we're so glad to have you with us tonight. I met this dear brother, what, maybe a year or so ago. Uh, about a year ago. And uh, he, you'll see him soon with me on Pastor Benny in the next few months. And uh, being a psychiatrist, having gone from, uh, lack of terminology, secular psychiatry to Christian psychiatry, how do you define that? Uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you, this, uh, this happened about 10 years into my practice. It was one of those experiences where so many people had come in uh, within that week and said, Doc, you saved my life. And yeah. I would say, whoa, whoa, hold on a second. I don't do the saving. Yeah. Christ does the saving. Amen. And it occurred to me at that time that I heard this voice and I, 
you know, I can't explain it, but it, it's like this. He said, this is not your practice. This is wow. your ministry. Wow. And so it changed the way that I approach a lot of things, and, and including addiction, for instance. You know, mm -hmm. if we were going to insist that addiction is a biopsychosocial spiritual disease, and we're going to work on the bio part, the psycho part, the social part, when are we going to get serious about the spiritual part in medicine? Absolutely. And if we exclude the healing power of the gospel Amen. in treating addiction, how much good do you think we're really going to be mm -hmm. able to do? And in my experience, it's been, uh, I, I'm, I'm witnessed to miracles every day yeah. in my practice, okay? And I see it happen, and I'm just a conduit. I'm just a person there to make, make these things happen. And, uh, you know, I tell people it's like this. Um, you know, you might be a Christian. I might be a Christian. But if you come see me and we live Jesus out in the parking lot, when you come see me, then we're not really going to get better at all here, right. are we? Right. right. So we invite the presence of the Holy Spirit. We invite the healing power of Christ into the office. And that's when the, the miracle of recovery really begins. Right. right. And, uh, and I know you, you have a, a, a practice that probably is just overrun <laughs> the time. I, I, I know that you. What opened the, the door to establish a practice to help those who are suffering from, from addiction? Well, it's, it's, it's really one of those areas that's underserved because yeah. uh, there is so much stigma and judgment. Uh, on the, even in the field of medicine, you yeah. see this particularly rampant. You know, people yeah. uh, sort of look on um, people who are addicted yeah. with disdain and contempt sometimes. Yeah. And um, opening that door there where people can just be respected right and feel loved right. makes a huge difference. It does. You know, one, one thing that's always amazed me is, you know, is, uh, I have a limited background in uh, um, psychology, but, uh, you know, in, in the United States, there's what, 10 to somewhere between 10 and 20 million people who have a mental illness. And I don't understand. We have physical illness. We think nothing about going to the doctor yeah. and getting help. But a mental illness, it's almost taboo. and. I just don't think it should be. I mean, we're going to get you better. We're going to get you through this. And uh, I, I, sta I stand amazed at how many people still want to be very hush-hush. How did you become friends with uh, uh, Pastor Jamie Murphy? How, how uh, did, how divine did providence. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how God works? He's my neighbor, yeah. So we didn't know we were neighbors. Uh, he was actually on Facebook and put up a post about hurricane relief. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what storm that was, but um, and I, I looked at it and somehow I surmised that he is only you know over the creek and over down the hill <laughs> and right there in the holler and that's where he was. Wow. So we wow. got connected there and uh, you know now now we're like flat and scrugs. You know we hang out all the time and uh, we've got a good thing going here. And, and I, I love this because if you want to get up uh, on Facebook uh, with Dr. Craddock, you can go to uh, Dark Corner Doc. I mean, <laughs> that's my page. <laughs> I, yeah, I love that. You know, I, when I went to North Greenville, I learned about uh, Dark Corner. I'm uh, sure you did. <laughs> oh, yeah. I did. And, you know, I, 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 I'm not going to ask what goes on at Dark Corner. I just, uh, I know this. I, one of our dear friends, uh, uh, Brian, uh, just, uh, you know, just loves you and thinks the world of you. He's done a great job at, at, uh, at, the, sure. at the church up there. Sure. And, um, you know, he was in my church for years, and God called him into ministry. And, and we're just, we're so grateful. And I know, I know that uh, you've had a great influence uh, on his life. And I think as well as he's had it on yours. Let's talk about men by design. Now, where do you fit into this picture on men by design? Obviously, I learned you cook chili. <laughs> well, no, he judges chili. I judge chili. Oh, you chili. judge yeah. I you don't, cook chili. Yeah. Oh, 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 okay. You he cook, judges, he judges chili. All right. All right. You cook. You judge. I guess I'll eat. Is that yeah. I can yeah. do that. All right. Tell, right. tell how, how, how did you get involved? What's your take on this? Oh, well, uh, as, as we became better friends, obviously, and I got familiar with what he's doing with PPI mm -hmm. and helping parents and kids, uh, we developed a deeper relationship. But I guess the biggest thing that really kicked things off was uh, yeah, during the early part of the pandemic, uh -huh. uh, when there was a, a, a massive shutdown of churches, yeah. we had a, a five-week revival that uh, we started together, and uh, we were able to carry it on in five weeks. We just had the first annual commemorative uh, anniversary uh, camp yeah. meeting there uh, to wrap that up um, back in April. So wow. we uh, 
being there at Camp McDaniel, uh, began to formulate and think about we need to start doing men's retreats here. And so, like Jamie said earlier, we believe you know, to get men out there, you've got to have man food. It's got to be good man food. Right. You can't have SpaghettiOs and Cheerios. <laughs> That's not going to work, all right? <laughs> right? And you've got to have real man fun and man activities or else you're not going to have guys come there. And then the fellowship happens. You get yeah. men together like that in common purpose and get away from the pressure and stress of cell phones and everything else. And then the sharing begins. And like he says, we're not trying to preach. Yeah. Uh, we are trying to share from the heart yeah. Yeah. and uh, in, in mentorship and discipleship. And that's, uh, that's really what uh, we want to make it all about. And we've been successful. We've seen yeah. this thing grow and grow and grow. We've got faith. We know God's blessing it. Uh, obviously, he is. Now, you, the men, uh, what, uh, do you have young people that come to this, men that, by design? Yes, or? yes, okay. we have 12-year-olds uh, okay. going on up to, uh, you know, Pastor Brian, our good friend. Right. Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, from from youth all, all Bri the way Pastor Brian <laughs> won the chili cook-off in Landrum back in January. I can believe that because he loves to cook yeah. and he loves to eat. Oh, but yeah. we won't say that on the air. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, we'll, we'll make sure. Well, what, uh, when we talk about young people, just a moment, what, what's the biggest yeah. area of brokenness that you see in the life or in the area of, of young people today? Well, I'll tell you something that just came up recently. And this really, really struck home with me and working with a 20-some year old young man who just accepted Christ, mm -hmm. who's in my discipleship class. And he has such a cynical view of the world uh, of, of hopelessness. And I've heard that before in working with other, uh, you, know, you know, my own kids, for instance, have friends that are experiencing the same thing. Right. And he says, well, is there really no hope for this country or for this world? And I said, you know what, I know what you're saying. And I said, and part of that comes from what you've heard my generation tell you, yeah. all right? And then maybe the generation older than us has told you those things. So we have to be careful about yeah. that. Yeah. I said, but the truth of the kingdom is, is eternal uh, life, and it goes beyond this life. We, uh, God, you know, we're salt and light. Jesus yeah. sent us out to be salt and light, yes. and we don't, gain anything from just withdrawing right. and becoming depressed. Right. You have to be in, engaged and involved right. and, and countless times in the Bible, uh, God's people have flourished, yes. flourished in the darkest of times. Yes. And, and, and we'll do the same. And, and, and we'll continue. You know, we were talking a moment ago, do you, see, do you see prices being paid in your practice from folks who have families that there's no patriarch, there's no father head do you see uh, oh, it's tremendous I yeah mean, it's uh, tremendous it, it, we're working against that all the time and uh, this has become generational you yeah. know it's not just a recent thing that's right. happened now you're getting second Jamie can tell you uh, yeah. what you're seeing now is third generation with absent fathers Man. and so mom's tribe moms can't be dads no they can't they cannot be dads and so uh, you're, uh, you're seeing more and more of that, say, in your practice then. Uh, sure, people, absolutely. I mean, and from, from all the, the, the il illnesses and the ailments that come from that. Sure, we have middle-aged men who came from fatherless homes who have no idea about how to be uh, grandfathers, for instance. Whoa. So yeah. we, we've lost um, yeah. so much in terms of that uh, uh, you know, knowledge about raising kids and families. Yeah. Yeah, I know uh, both of you, all of us, like to read. Who's your favorite author? Who, who, who are you reading? Uh, who, who's really making an impact from, uh, from, from the book side, author side? Not med books, but, you know, uh, read. Who's... Uh, well, I'll see, yeah, right now I'm in some pretty heavy stuff. I'm teaching apologetics. So I okay, could, uh, yeah. okay. And uh, so it's not light reading exactly, but uh, the, uh, uh, the evidence that demands a verdict. Yeah. I'm, I'm Kind of Lee Strobel. Yep, there, Lee Strobel. That's exactly right. right. Book, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm teaching that. Um, you know, I, I, I'd say there are other ones, you know, yeah. too. Yeah. But. But, you, but, you know, it, the thing that, uh, you know, if, if we don't, if iron's going to sharpen iron, we got to read. 
I mean, we have to stay up because, sure. you know, there's a lot of stuff out there. Uh, you know, I'm amazed that my grandkids, they think that the only thing Pop reads is the Bible. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, well, he does, but, but I like to read other things too, you know. Sure. I mean, because I, I want to be, be well-rounded. Uh, what, uh, uh, what led you to start your own podcast? Well, I think it, I really, I was a guest on several other podcasts, uh -huh. and once that got started, it kind of um, uh, went from there, and uh, it's been something that's been real fun to do. I've had Jamie as, a, as a, one of my guests, yeah. and uh, exploring, really, uh, the local ministries that are just right here next door that need a little funding, need a little help. You know, one of my jobs with uh, Jamie is helping him with fundraising. Yeah. And what I found is that people, when they know about what you do, are going to get behind you. They always do. And with podcasts, it's just a way to get that out there yeah. to more people. Yeah. Do you have any idea how many tune in or, or view the podcast? Does well, it's gone up. We've had uh, we had ten thousand people, I guess, uh, That's great. peak uh, at the last one we did, and uh, from all over the world. Sure, too. isn't that something? It is crazy. I know, from <laughs> South Korea, you know, you can see we got four or five hundred people. <laughs> So, I mean, and yeah. you know, it, it shows that there is a hunger. Yes. I mean, you know, for, for people, they they uh, they want to better themselves. They want their lives to be bettered. And obviously, uh, men by design. This this is what it's all about. I mean, you're, you're you're committed to bettering people's lives through the power of the gospel, through the power of Christ's love. Sure. And. Uh, you know, and, and so many times we think, well, oh, okay, I'll go and I'll take a pill and I'll get better, I'll take an aspirin. But, you know, sometimes uh, the greatest change in our lives comes from the invasion of the gospel and the saturation when it just comes into our heart. And um, oh, I agree. You know, I, when Paul told the Corinthians, uh, you know, about the word and about spiritual strongholds, that's what I deal with every day. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I can deal with you know, sort of the, uh, the, the symptomatic needs people right. have. Right. But the bigger thing that takes time to work on are those spiritual strongholds. Right. And you know, I tell people it's like this, as soon as you accept Christ, the moment you accept Christ, He starts walking you up yeah. to one spiritual stronghold after another. Mm -hmm. And we experience that as, as trouble mm -hmm. or stress right. or things not going my way. Right. But the answer is He's He's walking you past there to get you to the next part. Always does. Sanctification. <laughs> sure. Always. And, and, and you know, uh, what, what an opportunity you have uh, to see people who come in who we know are hurting for whatever the reason. Sure. And uh, not only using your medicine and medical background, but to use that spirit and the spiritual background that God's placed in you. I mean, good night. I, I'm just thinking. I, we've been talking tonight about iron sharpening iron, men by design. And uh, don't go anywhere, uh, Dr. Craddock. We thank you. And uh, uh, Pastor Murphy, we thank you both. And just after Ken sings in a moment, uh, Pastor Goodale is going to come. But right now, Ken Turner, he's going to sing, It's No Secret, Ken, lead us. <laughs> Probably one of my favorite songs ever. The chimes of time bring out the news. Another day is through. Someone slipped and fell. Was that someone you? You may have long for added strength, your courage to renew. Do not be disheartened, for I bring hope to you. Help me sing it now. It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. With arms wide open, he'll pardon you. It is no secret what God can do.
there is no night. For in his light, you'll never walk alone. Always feel at home. Wherever you may roam. And there is no power can conquer you while God is on your side. Just take him at his promise. Don't run away and hide. It is no secret what God can do. Are you helping me? Come on in. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. With arms wide open, he'll pardon you. It is no secret what God can do. It is no secret what God can do. You gotta love him, folks. He, he's a great guy, and Ken, we thank you for, for your music tonight. We, we continue talking about iron sharpening iron, men by design, and uh, I want you to welcome Pastor Brad Goodale. We're so glad to have you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor Benny, I appreciate and, it. You know, and, and of course, my, my question to you, of course, is, is this, what, and that you are CEO mm -hmm. of C4 Ministries, Inc., Incorporated. Right. What is C4? All right. Well, C4 stands for four C's, okay. obviously. Most right. people with a military background understand C4 is something that's explosive. It's an okay. explosive. Okay. And we get that as one of our verses, Acts 1-8, okay. you shall receive power, power, dynamite power, when you know when you, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So here are the four C's. All right. We are a Christ-centered, crisis, care, and counseling ministry. Christ-centered, counseling, care, and counseling, counseling that's the four C's, Christ-centered, crisis, care, and counsel. Great. And so, you know, you think about this, Pastor Benny, Jesus Christ met people in a crisis. Yes, the did. woman at the well, the man in the graveyard, the cutter that would, you know, take his, you know, the chains off, run around without any clothes on, all right. these things. Right. Uh, Zacchaeus in a tree. Jesus Christ met people in a crisis. Right. And he did two things when he did that. If they needed something, he cared for them. If they needed clothes, if they needed food, whatever they need, he met that need. But then he would counsel them. Yes. He would give them a path, right. you know, eventually eternal life, a right. path to, to be with him one day, but an abundant life here on the earth and to live for him. And so um, I pastored a church in Union, Philippi Baptist Church, mm -hmm. for 20 some years, and God called me away from that in November 2018. I didn't know what he wanted me to do. I just knew he was changing my heart about something. Right. And then about six days later, he gave me this uh, C4 thing, and now I do it as well as pastor uh, Mount Joy Baptist Church in Union. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's just amazing. Uh, they allow me to do C4, and uh, they're all behind that. And uh, their pastor had been there about 16 years and he was in a medical crisis. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I had a conversation with him and his wife and um, he just, he couldn't do it anymore. Physically couldn't, Pastor Alan West. Yes. And they'd done a great job there mm -hmm. for 16 years. And so one of the people said, aren't you supposed to help out a church in a crisis? Right. And uh, we are in one and so I planted myself there with my wife, Stephanie, and uh, they said, man, we want you to do C4 and, and pastor right. us, and it's been crazy. And so shortly after that, um, I've known Jamie uh, for many, many years. You know, he was in the Navy. Yeah. Uh, I started out in the Marines. He always envied me because of that, and no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But with that said, no, my we, pants legs are good. <laughs> actually, we met each other officially. Yeah. Uh, Rick Corum. Uh, Rick Corum. His wife um, was singing, Kelly. Uh -huh. Yeah. 
Power Life Conference. Power Life okay. Conference. I was preaching, and we just connected. And uh, we both did some kind of the same things in the military there for a while. Um, so that we were linguists and uh, stuff like that, and so in intelligence. And so I didn't say we were intelligent. We were in intelligence. <laughs> but, uh, I, I was intelligent. I mean, I, but with that said, I, I we, served in the Navy, so it took uh, intelligence to do uh, this. Right, right. Uh -huh. So we, we just connected, and then when he had this, uh, you know, the Lord laid on his heart about this men by design, um, I jumped all on board. I know Jamie's heart. Anytime he does something, he does it with passion. He does it with the purity of the Word of God. I mean, he is a go-getter. Uh, I, I'll just be honest with you, and I, I'll speak this for Doc too. He takes care of us. He leads this ship, yeah. and uh, no pun intended. Uh, and he kind of just drops us off, yeah. which yeah. that's what Navy does with Marines. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh my. Uh, I, I love, all right, so uh, <laughs> you, uh, you've always been in Christian ministry? Uh, no, mm -hmm. um, I, I grew up in a, in a Christian home and um, had some situation. That's the testimony that I go around and. A lot of times Jamie asked me to speak, I share this. God's been so faithful to give me a lot of opportunity. I have this testimony called Undercover Christian uh -huh. that I share. Uh, I was, I was, uh, was kind of like a spy for the government uh -huh. and uh, I knew that the Lord had called me, got saved under Pastor George Turbyville. What at about Yeah, at Tabernacle Baptist Church. What about And that? I knew the Lord had called me into ministry. I had some events happen as a child, went through some abuse and different uh -huh. things. I got bitter about it. and. Uh, you know how a lot of times you just like, okay, Lord, I know you needed me to stay. Right. I need you to save me. Right. But as far as serving you full time, I just think, I don't know if I'm going to do that. And, you know, you can't run from God. No. He's relentless. And so he, he brought me out of that, uh, out of a undercover world. And I, I was in some sin and he brought that to light. Married an incredible woman who offered forgiveness and mercy. She's my prophet. Yeah. She's my Nathan. She confronted me, but then showed grace. And so through that, I, I surrendered to ministry, pastored an incredible church for 20 years at Philippi. And then God just began to deal with my heart uh, a little bit about doing something different. And, and I just stepped out in faith. And man, it, it's just great. Isn't it amazing how God can take our past? And uh, though we realize that w there wasn't anything gloriful about it, glorifying about it, and yet in, our, in the present, we're able to see how even in those dark moments, God was preparing, though yes. we may not have seen it. And, and <laughs> you know, Pastor Benny, you know, my story wow. is where, you know, I, I, I preached Psalm 61 in my uh, testimony, creating me a new heart, mm -hmm. O oh Lord, renewing me a steadfast yeah. spirit. I needed a new heart, I needed a steadfast spirit. But the thing about it is, you know, when Stephanie showed the grace that she showed and the, and the forgiveness with consequence, I mean, I couldn't stay in that lifestyle. Like the Lord asked us to repent. Right. We can't stay in sin. Mm -hmm. He offers forgiveness. He offers grace. He offers salvation, but he expects us to repent. And uh, so I did. And, and from that, I, you know, in 2008, we've been on the show several times. I met my modern day Zacchaeus, Bill Randall, yeah. uh, who, who had made some choices in Union County as a dishonest, you know, was our tax assessor. Yes. And now him and I, every day, uh, we have the blessings to pastor. He pastors Beulah Baptist Church, and I do Mount Joy. We have the honor every day to just get up in our community and help people in a crisis. And uh, we're blessed to have our two wives that support us, right. Heather and Stephanie. And, um, and so I, I say that because I'm constantly, you know, you, we live in a world where people are in crisis. And I, when I say this from my heart, this is what I love about Men by Design. Men by Design is getting outside the walls of the church and we're meeting men in real life. Right. And that, that's why I love what uh, Jamie does. And, and, and I do look at him as a pastor right. and uh, he's been some, a great pastor kind of influence on me, talking great words of wisdom in my right. life. But we build relationships with these people. And that's what we do with C4. That's why I'm all about it. I mean, we just don't like, here it is, now go do it. We walk through them. C4 is a path. It's right. not a program. Right, right. And uh, same thing with this. I mean, when we go to these things, I see the same, a lot of the same guys come and they're inviting friends, inviting other people, and we're building a relationship and, it, well, and it's on what, the front line. What we saw happen at our very first um, retreat last fall, mm -hmm. we put together a curriculum. We had five different speakers handle each part of the curriculum, but I don't like to use the word, but the magic happened. Right afterwards right at the fire pit when the guys were sitting around talking with our leaders right. um, Doc Craddock was hanging out with guys late into the night and they're just sitting around talking mm -hmm. 
And so we're shifting from a preaching retreat mm -hmm. to we're going straight for the fire pit right. because that's where our leaders are able to, let's spend some time talking. Sure. And, sure. and what he means by that too is, I mean, we are, we are doing it on a level where it's not a traditional sitting behind a lectern or sitting in a pulpit, which I do right. that and he does that. I do it weekly and right. all that. But we're preaching to them like right here and not preaching at them, just right. Right. sharing the word sure. of God with them. Sure. But you begin when you do that, you know, like C4 and Men by Design, we're, we're in the trenches with them. And when you can get, here's what people are saying. People are saying when we deal with guys, we just don't know what to do. And so one of the things that I'm going to do on Friday night and, and you know, Pastor Jamie says, let's, or Thursday night, he says, let me go for it. Men were created to do three things. Okay. Three. Let's hear them. Worship, work, and have a wife. Mm -hmm. That's in the beginning. Sure. God made Adam, and the first thing he did, he worshiped God. Absolutely. He worshiped God, and then God gave him the task of tending the garden. And then he made this beautiful woman for him, Eve. He had a wife, and some, somebody may watch tonight, well, I'm single. You're still supposed to have a wife. Mm -hmm. It's called the Bride of Christ. Right, absolutely. We're to be connected with, with the Bride of Christ. Right. And, and so absolutely. no matter what, you know, that's the greatest fellowship we have. And, and so when we do that, man, some of these guys are out here, they don't know what, they, they, they're bombarded by a media right. that don't give them the definition of what it means to be a man. No, not anymore they don't. And that's what we want to do. And yeah. you know, they struggle with that. Yeah. They struggle with that. And you know, if we're just sitting behind a lectern, and I love this direction it's taken, and just saying, do this, do this, do this, right. it's, it's just different when you sit down and God says, I hear you, but how do you? Right. Right. Let me tell you what I'm struggling with, what right. I deal with. Right. And so I, I think it's awesome. You know, talk about, if you would, for just a moment, what does it mean to take a step of faith in ministry? <laughs> well, to take a step of faith was, where I was at, uh, I, was, I was in a really good situation. Incredible people, no problems. You know, Pastor, you've been in churches and you pastor church. I mean, it was just great. I mean, you, every church has a problem because the church is a family and every family has problems. Mm -hmm. is, is that not true? Oh, I mean, boy. we all do. <laughs> and so, uh, but it was a great situation and I, I could have wrote it out. My grandfather, who taught me more about being a pastor than anybody, was just a cotton mill worker, World War II veteran, didn't even finish high school, but he was very wise, mm -hmm. loved pastors. He right. would always tell me, the pastor is greater than the president of the United States, Brad. Why? Because he watches out over our soul. <laughs> and so I grew up in a very God-fearing home yeah. of pastors and men of God. Yeah. And so I, I just knew, I didn't know why. Most people thought, even Jamie said, what are you doing, man, leaving Philippi? But God just knew that he wanted to do something different. And I had no clue. I'd never heard of C4, never thought of it. Yeah. And when I put in my resignation on my 50th birthday, it was oh, really man. crazy. 20 years after being ordained into the ministry, mm -hmm. I, I said these words. I said, it's either a major midlife crisis or it's an act of God. Yeah. And that was on a Sunday. And Pastor Benny, as God is my mm -hmm. witness, mm -hmm. on Friday, <laughs> the Lord just woke me up and I began to type on my smartphone. I still have the original note uh -huh. at six o'clock. And at 624, I text my partner now, Bill Randall, Pastor Bill, the whole C4 model. Wow. And he said, how long have you been working on this? And the stamp said 621. I said 21 minutes. I had no clue what I was going to sure. do when I resigned. Sure. But then God has, has started the C4. And it is an incredible thing, Pastor Benny, in Union. I mean, we, uh, we're working with law enforcement. We're working with the education. We're working with DSS. We're working on And people, we're working together as a community. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing lives change. And uh, I got a really lot of fun. friends down there at Tabernacle Baptist Church. So oh yeah, sweet yeah, people. yeah. But I grew up there. Yeah. One yeah. quick question: What is what's what is the power of having godly friends? Oh man. I mean, come on. You know, that's something we. Can talk I'm still about. looking for some. <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> we could I was about just that. about to brag on it, for but anyway, eons. yeah. Could we not? I mean, you know, we could. <laughs> I will tell you this, and 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 Jamie. And as I'm getting to know Doc, and I want to get to know him a lot more, and I'm, that's why I'm excited too to get to know a lot of these leaders. But for Bill, Bill Randall, um, he's my partner in ministry, but he is a godly friend. Yeah. And what I mean by that, Bill served about four years in federal penitentiary. And let me tell you what, sometimes Bill will say, I wish I could go back to that. He taught me some things about godly friends, especially godly men friends. Yeah. Literally, they would go into a Bible study every night and they would confess their sins, like the Bible says in, mm -hmm. in Ephesians, sure. to confess your sins to one another. Right. Right. And then they would cry out to God. And I mean, you're talking about real. 
I mean, that's when it gets real, uh, that when you have godly friends, and it starts with my best friend, my wife, they're not f afraid to confront you mm -hmm. and to say some things. You know, the Bible is very clear in Proverbs that an enemy carries kisses, but a friend carries arrows. Because right. an enemy may let you just go on down a path and kiss you the whole time and don't care about your outcome, but a friend will pierce yeah. you. That's what I love about Jamie. I, uh, Jamie's very, he has a very strong will personality, but um, he'll tell you like it is. And I know if I got out of line, he would have no problem with telling me. And, and you know, and, and that's a godly friend. That's, that's what you call men by design. I mean, you yeah. know, that, that love. You. you know, we've been talking tonight to some three wonderful guys. We've talked to Pastor Jamie Murphy. We talked to, uh, to Dr. Jeff Craddock. We've been wrapping up tonight with, Doc, with Pastor Brad Goodall. And um, we want to thank, you've been calling in with your prayer request and all. You know, I want us to, uh, we're getting ready to come to 9 o'clock, but I, would y'all just, I want to offer prayer. We're just going to lay hands right here, and I sure. just want to offer a brief prayer. Loving Father, every need that has come in, you're aware of. Every praise, you're aware of. Every hurt, every brokenness, you know. Father, I pray thy will be done. Your word says, I am the God that healeth thee. We pray thy will being done. Bless everyone that's called and everyone that will be calling. Thank you for these men by design, how they've blessed our heart tonight. We pray your blessings on them and their family and their ministries. In Christ's name, amen. 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 I hope that uh, you, you've learned some things tonight. Uh, I certainly have. And uh, I want to thank them for being part of our program. And uh, now listen, we're coming up on 9 o'clock. Uh, I'll be here on the other side of 9 o'clock. I'm looking for you, all right? I'm not going anywhere. Don't change the channel. Ken Turner will be back with us. And thanks so much for making Nightline so much fun. So from all of us here, uh, having a wonderful time at uh, Nightline WGGS Television. We're waiting on you on the other side of 9 o'clock now. Don't go anywhere. I'm Pastor Benny looking for you. <laughs>